Alright guys, not to back again today, I hope you are all doing well and enjoying your day so far and day one of week three of the CDL Stage 2 Season 2021, whatever exactly it is, has now concluded. Two very interesting matchups to run through today, so important honestly these ones for, well the storyline certainly, but also how the group standings are going to be in Group 3. And it sets up in an ideal world the actual perfect scenario, right, given the fact that Dallas and Optic are going to be playing each other this Sunday, there is a lot on the line certainly in that game. Enjoy to take your thoughts in the comment section below, like if you guys enjoyed the video, subscribe if you enjoyed as always I'd greatly appreciate it. it really helps out the channel thank you very much indeed for doing that and of course today is April Fool's Day some teams certainly had well their fair share of the drama on Twitter we'll probably talk about that in more detail tomorrow but this is pretty funny the subline is it honestly really well made stuff and as you can see on the car right here I'm not exactly sure if this was like photoshopped or if they actually graffitied up someone's car one of the production guys I'm not really sure but no Doug no dub certainly one of the best April Fool's things I saw certainly some other things that maybe weren't so good we can discuss that I'm sure it linked tomorrow apparently they also tweeted this and they're like soon deleted it afterwards. Welcome back home at Sensor. But um, yeah, unfortunately, that is not the case. But he does also say Sensor officially retiring from Call of Duty. But oh well, as you can guess, I actually haven't watched this video. But I'm just guessing that it's an April Fool's, you know, shenanigans. You know the drill at this point. Let's talk about the first series of the day then. So this was the Dallas Empire versus the Mutineers. Mutineers looking so good as of late. I mean, they obviously had that 3-0 versus Optic last time. Before that, I mean, they lost 3-1 to the Mutineer or they lost to Seattle Surgicals. It's tough to lose to yourself. So no, maybe they weren't looking so good. It was just Optic having certainly an day that they had really an off week last time around. But Dallas Empire come in here and I mean it's a triple checkmate shenanigans. You know the drill at this point. It's um, kind of frustrating to have to watch but Dallas really showed their world championship form and it's really been the search and destroy where their issues have lied. In the respawns they've been looking very solid indeed but in their searches that's where they've kind of fallen short especially to Minnesota Rocker and Atlanta FaZe. I think actually against other teams they have something like a 9-3 record but those two teams they can't seem to get past and that's kind of been the downfall for them so far this season. However here against the, uh, the Florida Mutant is they will come out swinging. This is kind of funny for the CDL as well. They put up on stream classic April Fool's gag for the boys. Nuketown in all game modes. What's your favourite Nuketown by the way in the comment section below? Black Ops 2 was nice. Black Ops 1 just has a special place in my heart certainly but unfortunately we don't play Nuketown. I mean it probably would have been more entertaining to watch to be honest than Triple Checkmate but that is how it is at this point. Skies drops 38 map 1 on Checkmate but it isn't enough. Dallas got over the line 250 to 213 and Shotzi really came to play on this game one. It was pretty impressive because so far this season Shotzi was such a force on the map at the end of last year and this year he hasn't not necessarily shown it quite as much it's kind of a, it feels like maybe a little bit like last year where he has a relatively slow start to the season but really gets going in a couple of months into the season so we'll have to see how it goes but Shotzi right here 33 and 23 I think he went on like an 8 streak or something as well that was enough to get the job done in the Mutineers and then we go into this checkmate search and destroy and once again it's defense all day baby in the Optic series it was a bit different we'll discuss that in a second but um, pretty much all defensive round wins Illy does clutch a very nice little 1v1 in the end against Slack I think uh, it was it Slack who was in the 1v2 I think it was yeah he got the first kill and Illy just about gets the kill with the Krigger the close range situation it goes all the way to around 10 and Empire closes out on the defense no surprises there to take a 2-0 advantage in the series and then we go into a control I mean as Carson says right here at CDL stats 27% offensive win rate on control and 37% on search and destroy I actually think it would be um, I actually thought it would be to be honest a little bit less than that but you know it is what it is and here we go into the control and Dallas closed out as well I'm pretty sure this was once again another 5 defenses so Checkmate kind of is what it is. I wish there was a, you know, another map we could chuck in so that we didn't have to have, and especially Checkmate for all three game modes. Like, I don't actually think it's too bad for Hardpoint, but for Search, it's very tedious. For Control, I think it's very tedious. As we say, some of these Control changes might make it a little bit more playable on the offense. I mean, this clip from Shotzi was absolutely disgusting right here. All of the kind of Zio trio of a Hukili Shotzi went off this series, really had great numbers. Crim6 was kind of along for the ride here on the Checkmate, and as Sky says, you know, GG's Dallas lost 0-3. Every map was winnable, just a tough one to close down. So yeah, fair play to Crim6 and the boys. They get the job done. There's a funny thing from one of the Dallas videos relatively recently. And of course next up is Optic Chicago. So this was such a massive series for them. I'm pretty sure if they lost this series, I'm pretty sure they were relegated to the losers bracket for the major. They have certainly kept their dreams alive here. And um, in honestly emphatic fashion, right? This is a series you're looking like look, Seattle have been looking really good as of late. They look great these last couple of weeks. You know, Big P, that being Gullis, he's really shown up lately. I mean, we've got Pristini coming to form. Octane putting up numbers. Pristini's actually been 
been putting up some good numbers these last couple of weeks. An Optic come in here, of course, off a shambolic week last time. Don't even win a map. And you really feel like that they have to start off this series well, right? And that's the thing with Optic that they're such a, right now at least, I think, they're such a momentum-based team. Last week, when they had the momentum going against them, they, they kind of collapsed right in a few of those maps that we saw. And um, it seems to me that it's very much like a vibes thing on this team. If the vibes are flying and they're flying high and they're confident and they're feeling themselves and they're communicating well and, you know, they're really there. And you could hear when we go to the listening in game one that the energy was really there from these guys. But I do wonder if they'd have lost the map one, would they have had the, you know, would they have had the resilience once again? Would they have thought in the back of their mind, oh my God, like that's seven map losses in a row. You know, like, you know, can we clutch up? But it really felt like once they won this game one, that was the series in their back pocket almost already. And um, some crucial plays from a lot of the guys on the Optic team. Informal looks spectacular. He was actually pulling out the QBZ on a checkmate search and destroy. That was pretty interesting to see. But Dashi here on the Krig, the QBZ goes away. We saw, you know, he didn't really have too much success with that. He was actually using the 74U to pretty good effect at times. But um, yeah, they go down a little bit early on right here and Seattle have a nice little lead. But Formula Dashi pick up a load of kills over at P3. They trade it out. They get a bunch of time and they actually make a fantastic break in towards the, well, the P5 hard point to close out the game. Envoy gets a massive 2P. So this is really like all the things that we saw going wrong with Optic a few days ago. The trades not being there, the communication not being there, you know, fundamental mistakes as well in some of their rotations. But also like they didn't have any individual firepower, right? Like those games that we saw last time around, Dashi wasn't stepping up. They didn't really have anyone coming to play. But this time, like the individuals came to play, the communication was there, the energy was there. We heard it in the listening. And um, this is the Optic we expect, right? This is the Optic we hope to see because we hope for them to be championship contenders. But we need someone to, to try and challenge phase, right? So I think Optic can be that team, especially in the respawn and that they certainly showed that, look, this team, nothing wrong with it. We, um, we had an off week last week. Now it's time to turn the season around. And, well, here they come up against Seattle Surge. And, well, just about clutch up on the game one. It was only a close one. It was similar, to be honest, to what we saw against their Florida Mutineers last time when Awakening went mental at the end of the map one to close it out. But in that, I think there was probably some more fundamental mistakes. And the clutch factor from Optic comes to play. And um, this just felt to me like such a crucial map win to them. They go over the line in game one. They go into the rest of the series full of confidence. And it was their checkmate search and destroy, which really really was pretty spectacular right here. As you can see, four more clutches this 1v1 to go up 4-1 on the map. As we say, it's difficult to win offenses on this map, but Optic do so with not really too much issue, clutching rounds left, right, and center. And yeah, 4-1 right here, as you can see. Form with the QBZ in hand. That was certainly an interesting decision from here. He pulls it out. Clearly, it's working for them. And um, the trades were just so good for Optic right here. I mean, it, as I say, it's really rare that you can win so many offensive rounds on this map. But uh, they really do string a number of them together. A lot of the time, the teamwork was really there from Optic. They were trading these rounds down. They were, you know, not just dying out in the open. They were being confident, right? That was one of the things we saw the other day. I think in the hard point against the Mutineers. Also, we saw it in the search and destroy, right? That round 11 where Dash and Envoy child one by one. And and died to skies. That's the kind of round where you'd think, okay, if the team was a bit more confident, they'd maybe have pushed up, they'd have got with Scump, and they'd gone for the trades. Whereas, you know, they kind of uh, close back in their base, they sit on head glitches, and they end up losing the round. But it really felt like this game, like if there was an opportunity for a Chal, they were going to go for it, but not necessarily in like an ego Chal type way, but actually in a way that, you know, it makes sense to move quickly with your team. And um, that's what they were doing, and it really worked out on some of their offenses right here. And uh, well, Cold Blood, it's Optic Chicago, Scump comes on the flank, closes out one round right here to go up 5 2, and then they close out the final round as well and despite Gunless having a pretty nice round at a time he had a three piece right here or you know three kills in the round to close out one of them it just wasn't enough for Seattle they moved down well in an impressive 6-2 fashion formal leads the way at 12 in four and as you can see green all across the board on this map 1.5 3.0 1.2 1.67 .1 not much you're going to do if you're Seattle surge on this one and oh uh, well it really was the tr trades were on point the energy was on point from Optic this is the team we expected to see and they go into the control with once again a lot of energy and a lot of confidence and this this really does drive this team and it felt like a this point as they um you know they get three out a couple of times already they have this season but certainly on the other side of things when the momentum is going in their favor optic are a team that can bowl anyone over in a relatively quick 3-0 fashion and once again right here they really do clutch up i noticed right here the total well, right at the end of this first round of course there's no other play to make in this position than just sack the point so it's not like um there was a revolutionary play that optic made but we saw the other day on the checkmate that it decided not to stack you know decided not to force stack the b point and on checkmate there are other plays you can make they tried to go for some spawn kills and such it was on, um, on this map, of course, the only thing you're going to do in this situation is stack the point. But they do it to great effect. They force stack it up and uh, win this round very quickly indeed on the first offense. 
does go down to the wire though, Seattle managed to take an offense, goes down to round five, and this is once again where the individual players on Optic really weren't showing up last week. Not only was, as we say, there were some other issues with the squad, but the individuals weren't coming to play. This time, Scump has a couple of nice moments here in the control, but it was really Envoy right at the very end, who, um, you know, put on an absolute masterclass, to be honest, right at the end of this control, gets like a four-piece, calls in the streak, and they close out on the offense in a three-to-two fashion on the raid control, and a very strong Seattle surge, it seems, these last couple of days, get taken down with a plum, to be honest, for Optic Chicago right here. This, as we say, this is the team we expected to see. This is the team that really came to play today. And they certainly do not have their, well, they do not have it so easy. The rest of the week, they're going to be playing up against the Dallas Empire on the Sunday. Now, it's, um, it does remain to somewhat be seen exactly how the, the group is going to play out. There's still many other matches to be played in the group. But if Optic beat Dallas on the Sunday, they will be in the winner's bracket. And it's great to see Optic playing this well, so we actually get a great match on our hands then. And, um, well, if they then lose to Dallas, I think maybe they still have a chance. Maybe they don't. I'm not 100% sure. That I think there could be some great crazy tiebreaker situations right here. But Optic did just look so much better today. And while well, a huge bounce back series from Dashi especially has a 1.33 plus 14. And um, yeah, definitely looks like a different man with the QBC out of his hands. Scump doesn't have a spectacular series. The map one was a difficult one for him. But at the end of the day, they got over the line and it was only Octane going positive on the side of Seattle. So yes, huge bounce back from the Optic guys. As Envoy says, needed. That's absolutely they did. Not only for their confidence going forwards, but also so important in terms of how this group is playing out. If they go 2-0 this week, they get into the winner's bracket, they have a great chance. If they lose to Dallas, given that they lost, of course, to the Minnesota Rocker and also Florida Mutineers last week, things that very much get dicey and they're probably going to be in losers and that obviously is not where you want to be. So still a lot riding on the next series, but uh, they came out with the fire today. As Octane says, look, fundamentals weren't there in respawn for us. GG's Optic lost 3-0 to zero, and the Scump says GG Seattle feels good to finally win one. 1-3-0, one, 2-2 in groups. And just before I finish off the video, I just saw this on the timeline that came out from Optic, so pretty entertaining stuff. In to hear your thoughts on all this in the comment section below. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy it, I'd greatly appreciate a like on the video. It really helps out the YouTube algorithm to know you enjoyed this content. Other people like you may enjoy this content as well. And I've grown the competitive Call of Duty community. Thank you for watching as always. Take care. And I will see you next time. Protect trying to remove him. That's going to be two down. Here comes Envoy with another great play. Trying to take down three. Is he going to be able to get the fourth? No. Last player in a position is going to be Looney at that bedroom. But here comes the streak from Envoy. He's doing it all to close out this game. He's trying to close it out here in a 3 Oh, that's going to be two down. Both players flying out of money window. He's going to be able to take them both down. And just like that, Optic are going to walk away with the series.